The Bible indicates that there will be a great apostasy during the end times, as we read in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Falling away is the Greek word apostasia, which means defection from the truth, properly the state, apostasy. Apostasia, from which we get the English word apostasy, refers to a general defection from the true God, the Bible, and the Christian faith. The end times will include a rejection of God's word, a further falling away of an already fallen world. Every age has its defectors, but the falling away in the end times will be complete and worldwide. The whole planet will be in rebellion against God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every coup requires a leader, and into this global apostasy will step the Antichrist. I believe this takes place after the church has been raptured from the earth. Jesus warned the disciples concerning the final days, as we read in Matthew 24, 10-12. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. These are the characteristics of the great apostasy of the end times. By looking at the news headlines of our world today, there can be no doubt we are living in the final moments before Jesus' return. The Roman Catholic Church has opened a formal meeting that's likely to address major controversies like female priests and the church's response to its gay members. Pope Francis celebrated Mass this morning to open that meeting, saying the church needs to lower its barriers and welcome everyone. It's been called the Super Bowl of the Catholic Church. Bishops gathered from around the world to discuss hot-button topics, such as whether or not priests can get married, or whether women can become deacons, or whether or not divorced and remarried Catholics can have communion. The Synod is already historic. It's the first time women and lay people are being allowed to vote. However, 80% of participants are still bishops. But the biggest bombshell dropped earlier this week when Francis opened the door for priests to bless same-sex unions. Now, this came with caveats. Francis emphasized that blessings shouldn't be seen as elevating same-sex unions to the sacred place of heterosexual weddings. Up until now, the church's position has been that same-sex unions cannot be blessed because, quote, God cannot bless sin. But in his statement, Francis said, quote, we cannot be judges who only deny, reject, and exclude. LGBTQ groups have welcomed the important change, while conservative Catholics have blasted Pope Francis for what they say is diluting church doctrine and sowing confusion. All of this and the Synod has only just begun. Matthew 24, 11. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. False prophet is the Greek word Pseudoprophetes, which means a pretended foreteller or religious imposter. A false prophet is a person who spreads false teachings or messages while claiming to speak the word of God. Rather than speak the word of the Lord, false prophets deliver messages that originate in their own hearts, as we read in Jeremiah 23, 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They make you worthless. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of the Lord. In the Old Testament, punishment for false prophets was severe, as we read in Deuteronomy 18.20. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. In the New Testament, Jesus warns his followers about false prophets, as we read in Matthew 7.15-20. Beware of false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Jesus then gives a dire warning to false prophets as we read in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Scripture teaches believers to be diligent in faith and devotion to Christ's teachings, 
so that they will be able to spot false prophets and false teachers quickly. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. 1 John 4.1 Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. What does it mean to test the spirits? The reason for the admonition to test the spirits, or test all things, is that there are many false prophets, or wolves in sheep's clothing, that try to lead Christians astray. Sadly, there are many people who claim to speak for God, who are presenting a false gospel that is powerless to save. Such errant teaching leaves people with a false hope of salvation. 2 Corinthians 11:13 through 15 warns us, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. The reason for testing the spirits is to see if it is truly from God, or if it is a lie from Satan and his servants. The test is to compare what is being taught with the clear teaching of the Bible. The Bible alone is the Word of God. It alone is inspired and inerrant. Therefore, the way to test the spirits is to see if what is being taught is in line with the clear teaching of Scripture. In Acts 17, 10, and 11, the Berean Jews were commended because after they heard the teachings of Paul and Silas, they examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. The Bereans were called noble for doing so. Testing the spirits means that one must know how to examine the scriptures. Rather than accept every teaching, discerning Christians diligently study the scriptures. Then they know what the Bible says and therefore can test all things and hold fast to what is true. In order to do this, a Christian must be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The word of God is to be a lamp and a light to our path. We must let its light shine on the teachings and doctrines of the day. The Bible alone is the standard by which all truth must be judged. 2 Timothy 3:16 and 17 All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Roman Catholic Church has opened a formal meeting that's likely to address major controversies like female priests and the church's response to its gay members. The biggest bombshell dropped earlier this week when Francis opened the door for priests to bless same-sex unions. Homosexuality is strongly condemned in the Bible. Ezekiel 16, 49 through 50. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, fullness of food, and an abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy, and they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore I took them away as I saw fit. What was this prideful abomination committed before God? The answer is found in the book of Leviticus. Leviticus 18.22 You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20.13 If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. God gives mankind a dire warning for the acts of homosexuality in 2 Peter 2.6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. God also offers forgiveness to those who are living a life of homosexuality as we read in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. This raises the question, is Pope Francis the false prophet spoken of in the book of Revelation? The false prophet of the end times, together with the Antichrist and Satan, who empowers both of them, will complete the unholy trinity of the end times. The false prophet is depicted as having horns like a lamb while speaking like a dragon, meaning he sounds like Jesus, the lamb, but speaks like a dragon. Satan. The false prophet's mission on earth is to force humanity to worship the Antichrist. He has all the authority of the Antichrist because like him, the false prophet is empowered by Satan. Whoever the false prophet turns out to be, the final world deception and the final apostasy will be great. 
and the whole world will be caught up in it. The deceivers and false teachers we see today are the forerunners of the Antichrist and the false prophet, and we must not be deceived by them. These false teachers abound, and they are moving us toward a final satanic kingdom. We must faithfully proclaim the saving gospel of Jesus Christ and rescue the souls of men and women from the coming disaster. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? Appearance occurred on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.